Cancer, welcome to your April 2020 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So the month of April is a time when the sun is in your uh, 10th house. When, you know, the month begins until after mid-month every year. And that's the house of career. That's the house of the father. Authority figures, your your um, public reputation, and um, <laughs> as opposed to your private reputation, I guess. And it's interesting this year because I'm recording this before the new moon in Aries occurring on March 24th. A lot of you may be listening before then as well, or just you know, a bit afterwards. The new moon in Aries at four degrees will be in conjunction with transiting Chiron at five degrees of Aries. So um, this is an opportunity for healing to occur in this area of life for Cancerians. What this means is that you may have been experiencing some kind of um, issue with career matters. And this can run the gamut from never being able to feel confident on the job, feeling like, you know, you're not good enough, to having problems with authority figures, even like finding your uh, purpose, what you're here to do can be wrapped up in this. And, um, I definitely feel like with um, cancer, because you rule the opposite house, the house of home and family, the fourth house, that this may be something that you struggle with, or some, well, at least some of you, because you are used to taking care of others, of being that nurturer, male or female. And the idea of asserting yourself in the world and um, kind of putting yourself out there may not come naturally. You may all, always have a bit of reticence, even if you do so. Even if you um, enjoy having a career, you still may have that kind of ambivalence about it on some level where you feel a certain, um, I don't know, a certain kind of trepidation, if you will. And I think that um, this has the potential for something healing to occur. And it's because it's happening with the um, new moon means that opportunities arise that can kind of do this for you. And so in general, for the next however many years, maybe seven years or so, when Chiron is in this sector, this is a great time to explore your own um, confidence about your talents and how other people perceive them because a lot of times that sense of pulling back and feeling like not worthy can really wreak havoc on one's ambitions. Uh, A person may play too small, in other words. So I think there's a lot of potential here at this new moon for healing in this area. And you have the sun in that 10th house You're as a month begins. And on the 3rd of April, you have Venus going into Gemini. And um, so Venus has been in this very social 11th house for several weeks. Now it goes into Gemini. It actually is going to retrograde in uh, May, but I don't want to get ahead of myself with that. I just want to bring that up or bring it to your attention because um, this could certainly have the effect of um, being an area that has to be um, really looked at for a while because usually uh, Venus just lingers for a few weeks or stays for a few weeks and now it's going to linger for a lot longer than that. Um, It won't go direct in Gemini until late June. And even then it's going to, you know, still take time to climb out of that 12th house and, and, you know, go into, um, your sign. So 
Venus in the 12th house. These can be issues that connect with um, relationships that are karmic in nature. And we could say, okay, tell me a relationship that isn't karmic in nature. And if somebody said that to me, I'd say, you know, you make a good point. Most relationships probably have that element of being, you know, from another lifetime. <laughs> and some of them may be more positive, like soulmate situations or even twin flames. Even though they can be challenging, they may have a very positive you know, core to them. But then we have these other types of relationships that come into our lives and we know that we have a history with that person, but we don't know what to do about it because we just feel that they're not good for us. And yet we find them in our lives. And that is something to really um, ponder because it has the it has this um it can have like a uh, what do you call it like um, a bit of a um cyclic nature to it where you're with somebody you break up with them you get back with them and you can't understand why uh the two of you just don't call it quits totally because you can see that the relationship is just not a healthy one, but you just find yourself drawn to this person for whatever reason. And um, the, there's familiarity there. So these kinds of things can be explored um, while Venus goes retrograde especially. But right now, this can also mean that um, if you have met somebody recently, you're just keeping it quiet you don't want any kind of interference from others. You're just kind of like um, being um, rather secretive about this uh, relationship. Maybe you just want time for it to grow and you're tired of having um, other people putting their two cents in. And you have identified that as hurting you in the past and you want... To do something about it. It could be something along those lines too. Who knows? Um, so on the seventh, we have a full moon at 18 degrees of Libra. This is occurring in your fourth house of home and family, the house that you rule. So there's a, you know, an extra significance with this. There's some kind of closure or coming to a head with issues with domestic issues. This can run the gamut yet again if you're moving house. This could be the time when you uh, close where you sell the house or, um, you know, end your lease or whatever. Move, you know, actually move. Um, leave behind a house. You, you might realize that something from your childhood, the fourth house can be the childhood, something connected to the mother and that, and of course, with, since you rule the house of the mother, your mother, you know, is connected, is very strongly connected with you, regardless of the type of relationship you have had with her. You know, it's kind of funny because, um, sometimes I could see how people would say, you know, because cancer is associated with the mother and say, oh no, you know, my mother left abandoned me when I was five. I ha I don't have contact with her. She didn't raise me. I was raised by my aunt or I was raised by my grandmother. And so I have nothing to do with that woman, but you are totally tied to her psychically because even if you're trying to push her away, you still have that negative connection. Um, so it's, it's always very interesting when people claim that they're not connected to somebody and they're, they're, I was going to say their actions speak otherwise. It might not be their actions, but their, their mindset, what they're thinking about all the time may be completely connected to this person. And, um, and that's natural. That's normal. I'm not claiming that, um, 
it, it doesn't make sense for you to be. It makes total sense as far as I'm concerned. But it just is something that you have to face, that you have to heal from. Um, and actually, interestingly, um, some of you may know that at the time of a full moon, the sun is opposing it. And so the sun is in the opposite sign, opposite house. So the sun is in, in the 10th house at this time. And that, to me, is very symbolic of this idea of how does my career connect with my home life or my childhood? So, for instance, somebody who is an overachiever, maybe always the the ultimate intention was to get approval from the father or the parent who had the most dominance or influence. And the person may realize, I didn't do what I wanted to do. I was trying to please my my parents because I thought that was my route to happiness. And here I am, I'm middle-aged, and I have this, I have a lot of years under my belt doing this particular thing, but I'm not happy. And I'm, as I get older, I feel this sense of desperation or this sense of urgency that I have to do what I came here to do. And remember that you still have the North node in your sign cancer. So that sense of your purpose is still up for review. And actually, because it is an an early degree of cancer at this point, because it's poised to go into Gemini next month. Um, this is also going to square off with Chiron. Um, it's going to square off with, um, at the time of the new moon with the new moon. And it's in your house of the self, the first house. So you have to take that into account as well. You can't ignore one area for another and definitely not when the north node is in your sign on the 11th mercury goes into aries so mercury joins the party in that 10th house and um, this can be talking to people in positions of authority you know if you're looking for a position you might be in contact interviewing things of that nature Um, Perhaps you have the opportunity to speak to, you know, an audience or, you know, have some kind of ability to, um, yeah, speak to people who are aware of you in some capacity. On the 19th, the sun goes into Taurus. That's a friendlier angle. You know, when it's in Aries, it's a square. Now we're talking about a sextile, and this is the house of hopes and wishes. So this may be a time of um, luck. This is supposed to be the luckiest house, according to uh, traditional astrologers, and there's actually a new moon here on the 22nd at three degrees of Taurus. This is, um, you know, the number three major arcana. And in numerology, it it definitely goes together here, is about abundance and creativity. And this is occurring in your 11th house of hopes and wishes. So, and friendships and groups. So who knows, maybe you'll be um, somehow expanding that net, that social circle for some reason. And it may have some connection to career matters. You never know. Um, but this is great for any kind of, you know, make, set your intentions for long-term goals that you have. It certainly can't hurt. On the 25th, we have Pluto retrograding at 25 degrees of Capricorn in that seventh house where it's been taking quite a beating for some people's relationships. Maybe others have become very, very, um, deep you know, Pluto dives deep. Pluto retrograde in the seventh house, you're going to need to look at 
um, how you try to control relationships. And this may be something that is hard to really um, face because you may, you're a very sensitive person as it is, and it may feel threatening to look at it from that aspect, but it's really a good thing because even when I do personal readings that are love readings or, you know, relationship readings, dealing with another party, and even if I am presented with the scenario where the other person, I'm talking about the person other than the client is cheating or whatever it is that the person feels is, is not good in the relationship. I always bring it back to that client because, um, first of all, I never believe that it's a one way street that even, even in the case where it's super obvious that one person is very abusive in the relationship, there also has to be the acknowledgement that if you tolerate abuse, you are doing the dance with that other person. And a lot of times a person will get into a relationship with somebody who is showing who they are pretty soon, you know, pretty much right off the bat. And that person ignores the warning signs. And so they get in deeper and then they use the excuse, well, I'm married or we have a child together and they should have never gotten that far to begin with. So they have to look at their own self-esteem and their own addiction to relationships, their own fear of being alone. So maybe those are things that you have to look at um, because the seventh house is a house of partnership and yet Pluto can really lay bare a lot of the illusions of, you know, what partnership can and can't give us. Um, on the 27th, Mercury goes into Taurus. So Mercury goes into the 11th house. It's a great time for brainstorming what you want to attract to you in the next, um, year since we have the, the new moon having fallen there just a few days prior. Um, yeah, you know, just like any other cycle, but this is kind of some of your dreams, don't, don't believe that you don't deserve to have dreams, cancer. You have dreams just like anyone else. And you should, you know, feel that, uh, your dreams have value and that you deserve to be happy. Okay. That's what I have for you, cancer. I hope that this resonated. And if you'd like a private reading, whether it's looking at your natal chart, kind of analyzing it and looking at some of the coming trends or just the straight astrological transits, uh, hit me up at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.